Hello. Um, here to read chapters seven and eight of this book, Ballpark Mysteries, The Missing Marlin, by David A. Kelly. I'm going to read the next two chapters, and that's it. That's all I really have to say. Um, okay, here we go. Tortugas. Think about it, Mike. Don Dixon has a lot to gain if Uncle Oliver runs into problems, Kate said. Mike nodded. Sure, but lots of people eat gummy candy. It doesn't mean he's the thief. And I hate to say it, but the clues against Uncle Oliver are worse. Out on the field, the Marlins had finished the game six to three. Fans started getting up. Mike and Kate watched as Ned and the two men left with him left. Hang on for a minute, cuz, Mike said. He took the black marker out of his pocket and held up his baseball. I want to see if I can get some autographs. I'll meet you back here in a minute. Mike ran down the inf to the infield wall. A small group of kids stood near the dugout trying to get the player's attention. Mike joined in. He waved his baseball in the air. While Mike was busy, Kate dropped into one of the front row seats to watch the fish swim. She noticed two baseball fish in the tank. She waited for them to puff up, but neither did. Then the fish on the left caught her eye. It was brighter than the other one. Kate remembered Uncle Oliver saying that Marlin, one of the missing fish, had bright red markings. Kate shook her head. It was probably just the light. By the dugout, Mike was having better luck. The Marlin's first baseman had already signed his hat. Now Mike was trying to get Guppy to sign his baseball. Mike held it high so the pitcher would see it. Guppy was the only was only one person away when Mike felt a tug on his t-shirt. Mike, quick, come here, Kate said. You'll never believe what I just found. She gave his shirt another tug and ran over to the tank. Mike turned to see Guppy take a step back and wave to the crowd. He wasn't going to sign any more autographs. Drat, Mike said. He missed his chance. He took one more look at Guppy walking back to the dugout. Then he scrambled after Kate. Kate stood in front of the fish tank on the first base side. Look at this, she said. What do you see? Mike studied the tank. It looked just like it had before the game. He shrugged. Mm, what? Water? Is that a trick question? Kate stamped her sneaker on the cement walkway. Mm. No, you spongehead, she said. Don't you see what's in the water? Mike leaned over to look more closely. As he did, a green turtle about 10 inches long swam by. A minute later, a second turtle swam past. Those are just like the one I saw yesterday, Kate said. See, I wasn't imagining things. They're the endangered sea turtles that I saw in Uncle Oliver's book. And look, there are two baseball fish in there. The one on the left has bright red markings, just like Uncle Oliver's missing fish, Marlin. I bet that's what Ned and his friends were pointing at during the game. But the turtles weren't there when we checked the tanks with Uncle Oliver, Mike said, and neither were the baseball fish. I know, Kate said. That's because someone put them in the tank after we checked it. Maybe it was Don Dixon, Mike said. He said he'd be happy to take over the tanks from Uncle Oliver, and we know he has a key to the tanks. Kate nodded. Maybe, she said but it could be someone else. What do you mean? Mike asked. It could be Ned. Remember when I overheard Ned and those two men speaking Spanish during the game? Kate asked. I thought they were talking about the Tortugas Islands and un that Uncle Oliver had mentioned when he told us about coral reefs, but maybe they weren't. Mike looked puzzled. What were they talking about then? He asked. Kate pointed at the two turtles. When I saw these, I remembered something. Tortuga means turtle in Spanish. She said, they might have been talking about these turtles, not the islands. Oh, wow, Mike said. But weren't they talking about taking a trip to the islands? They were talking about money, but maybe they weren't talking about a trip, Kate said. Maybe they were deciding how much to pay for the turtles. Whoa, so you think Ned's selling rare turtles, Mike asked, and fish. Ned could be the connection between Uncle Oliver's missing fish and these turtles, 
Kate said. He must be taking the fish from Panther Park. Oh, here they are. Here's a picture of them. There they are. And then over here is the fish. Oh, heh. And the turtle. There's a turtle right here. <clears throat> what happened to the turtle you saw yesterday, Mike asked. Why wasn't it here this morning? Because Ned sold it, Kate said. He sells the fish in this tank and replaces them with new ones from Uncle Oliver's place. Maybe he's working with Don Dixon in the pet store. But I don't know where Ned got the turtles. Mike snapped his fingers. I know. How about when we were snorkeling yesterday, he asked. Maybe Ned or Don Dixon was the scuba diving shark that I saw. The mesh bag was there for the, was for the turtles. Kate nodded. So if Ned's the thief, he must put new fish in before games and take them out after, she said. If that's it, then those men next to him weren't planning a trip. They were bidding on exotic fish and endangered turtles. Chapter 8. A Cooler Getaway. So think about that. The author uses uh, the word cooler here. A cooler getaway. What do you think that that means? I think I know. Think about it. Do you see anything, Mike whispered? Kate shook her head. No sign of anyone yet, she said. Mike and Kate were huddled behind the infield wall. By now, almost all the fans had left the stadium. The grounds crew was busy getting the infield ready for the next day's game. From their hiding spot, Mike and Kate could keep a direct eye on the tank with the turtles and the baseball fish. Kate checked the time. Mom said she'd give us 30 minutes. She's still working on her story. They crouched quietly for 10 minutes, but no one came close. Think this will work, Mike asked. We know that someone's putting turtles in the tanks and taking them out, Kate said. So someone must be coming by after the game. It's either going to be Don Dixon or Ned or Uncle Oliver, Mike said sadly. Kate glared at him. It's not our uncle, she said. After 10 more minutes, Mike's knees began to ache. How about if I just sit over there and you call me if anything happens, he asked. No, we both need to watch, Kate said. And if the thief sees you in the seats, he may not pick up the fish and turtles. The minutes ticked by. The stadium was completely empty except for the cleaning crew. Kate checked the time again inside. They were supposed to meet her mother in five minutes. Mike dropped to the ground. Let's go, he said. This isn't going to work. Kate ignored him. A minute later, she gasped and pointed to the field. Mike popped his head around the corner and looked. Uncle Oliver was walking down the aisle toward the tanks. Oh no, Mike said. It's Uncle Oliver. I can't believe Uncle Oliver is stealing his own fish. Kate slumped against the side, side wall. Kate slumped against the side of the wall. See, I had to correct that. That way, he'll get the insurance money. Mike nodded. Geez, Kate, I think you're right. Take a look at this, he said. Kate peeked around the edge of the wall. Uncle Oliver had stopped to talk to someone. It was Ned. Kate shook her head and frowned. Uncle Oliver turned and walked back up the stairs to exit. Meanwhile, Ned looked around nervously. He took a step toward the fish tank near Kate and Mike. As Ned got closer, they saw he was carrying two black coolers. That's where the cooler comes in. Mike and Kate watched Ned, watched Ned open the top of the tank. He checked to see if anyone was watching. When he decided no one was, he quickly dipped the net into the tank and pulled out a turtle. He slipped the turtle into one of the coolers. Ned did the same thing with the other turtle and the two baseball fish. All the while, Kate snapped pictures with her camera. Now we have proof that Ned's taking the fish, she whispered. When he was finished, Ned put the top. Back on the tank, he picked up the coolers and headed for the exit. So I'm going to show you the picture of Ned. There he is, and he's got a net and cooler. Now Kate is taking pictures. That's not written in here. I'm just telling you. She's taking pictures for evidence. Okay, where was I now? Um... 
I'm on the wrong page. Okay. After I showed you the picture, I forgot to turn the page. Okay. Kate put the camera into her pocket. We've got to stop him, she said. Mike and Kate scrambled through the seats to the aisle, but it was blocked by a cleaning crew sweeping up. By the time they made it to the top of the stairs, Ned had reached the ballpark exit. He opened the door and left. Drat, we've lost him, Kate said. No, we haven't, Mike said. Come on, pretend you just hit a triple and run as fast as you can. Mike took off running. Kate followed. Their sneakers slapped against the concrete floor. Mike reached the exit door first. He pushed it open. Ned was right ahead of him. He stood on the corner, waiting to cross the street. We've got him, Mike said. They sprinted to the corner. The light turned and Ned started across. But just as Ned stepped off the sidewalk, Mike grabbed the cooler on the right. Kate took the one on the left. They wrenched the coolers out of his hands. Ned spun around. What are you doing, he asked. Don't fool around with those. I'm delivering fish. Mike and Kate stood their ground. Yeah, Mike said. You're delivering stolen fish and endangered turtles. Ned shook his head and laughed. You're crazy. And I've just been doing a test of filters. I'm returning the fish to their own tanks. Ned took a step toward Kate's cooler. Not so fast, Kate said. She moved the cooler closer to Mike. Ned looked like he was about to push Kate and Mike aside, but a voice called out to them from behind. Need help? Mike and Kate turned around. It was Don Dixon. Oh, no, Kate said. Rats, Mike said. Don Dixon's going to help Ned escape. So here they are. There's Ned over here. And over here is Don Dixon coming into the picture. So I could leave you right there. The suspense. You know what suspense is? It means you're waiting for something to happen. And then it doesn't, so now you have to wait. So you have to wait for chapter nine. Last chapter coming up.